Hey, Bo. Hey, BB. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Sitting out here with some cuttings and the thought I'd do a little propagation video. With the winter months approaching and all the indoor gardening stuff going on, a lot of people are starting to utilize their gardening time for things like propagating and just things you can do indoors. I'm not indoors just yet. I'm filming this in advance. But I'm gonna talk about this as if I was doing it in the house. Oh, and pardon the messy table. This was a very last minute decision to do this video, but I figured since I was working on the propagations on these cuttings, I should talk about it because I get asked about it and the only times I've really done propagations. They've been tucked away into vlogs and I've been trying my best to start getting some shorter videos out when they're subject related and not just random vloggy vlog type materials. So what I have here are some cuttings from my black varnish pseudoranthemum, which is a beautiful plant with absolutely gorgeous foliage. I had to make some cuts on the plant because it was getting long and leggy. Mm figured should go ahead and get those rooted. Why not? So what I have here, okay, really, really, really? <laughs> Just drug that giant ball out from under the table. And for whatever reason, only wants to play with it right next to the tripod. But when taking cuttings from really most plants, most plants that I like to propagate, things like, well, the pseudoranthemum here, you can see that the crotons, begonias, the way I do my cuttings, very, very simple. I don't like to overcomplicate it. And it's not going to be the same for every plant, but for the majority of plants I do propagations with, such as this pseudoranthemum, crotons, begonias, even hibiscus, I would do this way. Dracaena, the, really, there's a lot of them. Most plants with stems on them, not necessarily woody, shrubbery, that's going to be a little bit different. But for most house plants, this will do. What I've done here is I've taken, I think there's four cuttings in here. They have about three and a half to four inches of stem on them with two leaves and that's it. With the plant like the pseudoranthemum, I like to make sure that they go directly into water because they're gonna be more sensitive to uh, bubbles getting inside of those stems. Same thing with uh, a lot of begonias. They're going to be like that as well. So I got these into a glass of water relatively quickly, making sure that they can have a nice soak. And then right here, I have a pot of potting mix. This is a Spoma potting soil. So some people do like to make sure they're using a fairly sterile medium for rooting cuttings for good reason. Sometimes if a potty mix has too many organics in it, lots of manure and those sorts of things, then it can uh, lead to problems with rots and infections and things you just don't want to have to deal with with a cutting. So going sterile, not a bad idea. The Spoma potty mix, I just particularly like this potting mix because it holds on to moisture really well, yet it's still airy and it has the mycotone in it, which is just some mycorrhizae. It has stuff in it that's supposed to help encourage them to get going, get rooted. If I had a rooting hormone, I would go ahead and use that, but I don't, and it's not fully necessary for this sort of plant. These take root very easily. The thing that makes this plant a little bit different when it comes to propagation are these gigantic leaves that each one of these sticks has on it. It's gonna be very difficult to maintain moisture in these leaves and health in these leaves, sorry. The puppies bounce. Since there's no roots there, it's going to be difficult for the plant for just that little little opening down there to maintain the moisture that's necessary to get these leaves going. Generally, I like to make sure that my cuttings are no longer than six inches at the max. Usually about four inches is ample. That's all you need. And that they all have one to two sets of leaves on them. These all have one set, so a pair of leaves on each stem. Leaves this large are just going to be really difficult to keep hydrated. You can see that they're already wilting and this has been sitting in water for a while now. So with something like this, I'll take the leaf and give that a cut at least 50% of the way, if not 75% of the way. So that's all you're left with. And that's still a pretty dang big leaf. Some people don't like doing things this way. I've just found it necessary for a moisture loving plant. I could go even smaller than this. I would say as long as there's at least, I don't know, an inch and a half of leaf right there, then it should be fine. The main thing is that there's still some live plant tissue left in there for photosynthesis. That's important, right? They need to be able to get energy to put their roots down and do their plant thing. And then once that cut has been made, I will pull my cutting out. If it's a tuberous type plant like this is, then usually I'll make another cut at an angle, of course, with something that's been cleaned. Poke a hole in there with my finger and take the end of that cutting and get that down in there. Slightly pack that moist soil around the base of that stem. So there's that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the others prepped up and put in here and we can move on to the next step. There they are. They've all been cut. They're all in there. You can see the one where I didn't cut the leaf as extremely. It's having more trouble standing up. 
that's another reason that I like to make those cuts. Cutting the leaves, there's debate. Some people say don't do it. For me, it just depends on the plant and the situation. With these, it's necessary. The issue is that it increases surface area for infections and bad things to get into the plant and cause some problems. So that is certainly something to keep in mind. And I thought I was making very clean cuts. Perhaps it's because of the way I had them folded. It's fine. They'll be okay. These are fairly sturdy plants to propagate. And then water them in immediately, more efficiently than this. I'm just using my glass because that's what I have sitting here. I'll be sure to give it more water when I get it moved off the table. Getting that water in there helps get air pockets out, move the soil around, and pack it in just one more time, very gently around the base of those stems. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to take some wax, just some warm wax, and seal off the end of the cutting or you can use cinnamon powder, dabbing that on there. It's a natural desiccant. It'll help dry out that tip and help close that off again to help prevent infection and moisture loss from the plant. I don't have either of those things laying around, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to do so. If I were doing this propagation during summertime, it's nice and humid where I live, I would just stick this someplace where it's going to get some morning light, some filtered light, and I'd be done with it. Just making sure that it always stays moist, never let it dry out, but that's basically it. Indoors is different. It's what we're talking about. Here I have a bamboo skewer. Right now I'm just using my finger to get an estimate of how high I want that to be. I want it to be, I don't know, about an inch above that foliage there. Or actually I think I'm just going to cut this in half. Then I'm just going to poke those down into that soil. Just adding some support so that I can take this plastic bag here and gently slide that over the top. Hopefully without doing any damage to those cuttings very carefully. Then that's going to act as a little humidity enclosure. Those skewers are in there to help keep the top from falling down on top of the plant. It's really important to keep that humidity up when trying to get things rooted, especially a plant that's a moisture lover like the pseudoranthemums. They do not like to dry out. And now that they've been cut and cut and moved around and everything, that it's really important to make sure that moisture stays in here. Because there's a plastic bag around this, that's going to affect the type of lighting that I'm going to give the plant. The bag will stay on here anywhere from four to eight weeks. Actually, I'm going to take it off because it's hard to film with that's there, but now you've seen it, so you get it, right? Yeah, about four to eight weeks until I start to see uh, some signs of growth on the plants, just some little nubs or something coming out from inside of those stems then that's when I would go ahead and start to think about taking that bag off of the top. Of course, have to pull it back, at least lift it and scoot it to give the pot some water, right? Because again, moisture is very important here with rooting cuttings. Don't want to let those dry out at all. Not until they've established themselves. And as I was getting ready to say, using a bag, if it's a plant that likes full sun, remember it's just been cut. So full sun is going to be harder on the plant. So generally I dial the lighting back to a degree, and then to remember that these bags are going to somewhat intensify and magnify light somewhat also. So that's something to watch out for. It's a mixed bag with cuttings when it comes to lighting, right? Because they need that light to photosynthesize and get things moving, get those roots coming out, but they also don't have the root system to support a ton of light pushing them to growing and to needing to take up water when they can't because they don't have the roots. So just as a general rule of thumb, I generally just say bright indirect light is fine. Usually not a problem with that. It keeps the light directly off the bag to help keep it from getting too incredibly hot in here. Direct light, these bags, it's gonna get very toasty in here. And some warmth is good for getting things rooted up, but they don't need to be like 100 degrees or however, however hot they would get with the bag wrapped around them in the direct sun, even if it's through a window get pretty toasty in there. And oftentimes when I'm using a bag over the top of something for propagation, usually I can tell when the plant needs water by uh, when the condensation starts to slow on the side of the bag. And I'm noticing that during the morning or evening hours that there isn't any moisture on the inside of the bag. That's usually a good indicator that it's time to water the plant, but generally also you can just lift it and tell, or scoot the plastic up and just pop your finger down in there, see if it feels dry. That's all there is to it. Propagation's fun. I love taking cuttings from things. I don't do it all that often just because the space is limited with the number of plants that I have. This seemed like a good idea to talk about it since people have asked about it and since I'm doing it and the camera is already out here. So there it is. Really simple and easy. Personally, I prefer to root things directly into a soil over just using water, but it depends on the plant. Like pothos, I'll use water no problem. And pothos I'll root anyway, because they're like the easiest things to get going, right? Just comes down to a matter of preference as to whether you prefer to use a propagation method that involves some sort of growing medium or to use water. For me, I actually find water to be a little bit more upkeep 
than just making sure that some water gets into this pot probably every seven to 10 days. Once you have those cuttings down in there and you get that plastic bag over them, really just sit back and wait, make sure they don't dry out. That's all there is to it. So there it is, that's how I propagate cuttings. Not all cuttings, but a lot of them. This is this will do the trick for a lot of plants. And I'm going to wrap it up. Comment down below, say hi. Tips, tricks, suggestions. What are some ways you like to propagate? Anything you'd like to add? Helps everybody learn. There's like an odd amount of wind blowing through here. The palm tree blew over, so I think it's time to go inside. Keep up with the vlogs. This will probably be around more than likely. I mean, it's possible that when it comes time to move the plants inside, I might be like, eh, I don't need it. But I have the other one that has cuttings in it as well. So that's how you'll stay up to date with all of that. Here's what those look like about six to eight weeks later. They've just been hanging out in the garage. It's pretty cool in here. I don't have the heaters running yet. It's been like in the 50s and 60s in this space. So they're rather small indoors. Ideally, if it were like mid 70s, somewhere in there, they'd probably be triple the size, but they're doing okay. They're still hanging on. They've got some new growth on them. Not looking too bad. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.